Welcome to Power for Life. This broadcast brings to you a message of life-changing revival in the Holy Spirit. We pray that today's program will help to spur you on to experience the outpouring of the Holy Spirit in your life. Now here with today's message is Tom Hill. Christians today are afraid to talk about the Holy Spirit. I've noticed a number of occasions when I have been in public meetings where I have begun to talk about the Holy Spirit, that as I examine and evaluate the crowd and how they are responding to my statements, I see a great deal of fidgeting. I see a lot of people kind of rubbing their hands because they're starting to get a little bit sweaty. And I find people, in some instances, just plain giving me a blank stare, kind of turning me off, so to speak, because they are afraid to confront and to try and understand the Holy Spirit of God. And we see it in our books and our literature, in Christian literature today. You find very little discussion about the Holy Spirit, about who He is, and the works that God sent Him to perform in our lives. And worse yet, we even find as a result of that division in the church over the work and ministry of the Holy Spirit. And because we fear the Spirit, and we fear to discuss and talk about Him, and the net result is we neglect him. We don't use his ministry. We don't permit him to work and function among us as God sent him to work in us because we fear him and we neglect him. It's almost like he's the black sheep of the family, so to speak. Oh, yes, he's God, but we just don't talk about him very much as though there is something inherently wrong in the Holy Spirit himself. And so the church suffers today because the work and ministry of God today is carried on only by the Holy Spirit. And to the extent that we neglect him and resist his work, then we quench him. And he cannot work in us as God sent him to work and to function. And so we have only one other option, and that is to try and do what God is to do through the Spirit in our own efforts. And as I evaluate the church today and I look at the lives of most believers today, I find them trying to do exactly that. Trying to live good lives, trying to follow and obey God solely without the power of the Holy Spirit. They try to do it in their own strength, in their own abilities, trying to grasp it as best they can, and all of the time, failing. Failing because it can only be accomplished through one power, and that's the power of the Holy Spirit. And God sent him for that purpose, that he might function in our lives to produce the very nature and power of God within us and through us, that we might be walking, living examples of the power of God. We find as we read in Scripture that there's a very clear time when God poured out His Holy Spirit upon His people. And it isn't the only time, but it's one time that I want to use as our study today, as the foundation for our examination of God's Word, to see what the Holy Spirit can do in our lives and what God purposes for Him to accomplish in us as believers. For our study, I want us to examine a well-known chapter, Acts chapter 2. Now, we won't look at the whole chapter. We don't have time for that today. But I want to look at a couple of verses at the very beginning of it. Because this chapter identifies for us the time in history when God poured out His Spirit upon His people. And it gives to us not a one-time does-all event, but it gives for us instead a clear indication of how God wants to do that in our lives every day and how He wants to pour out His Spirit upon us that we might know His glorious presence in our daily practice and our daily experience. I'll read just a couple of verses and then we'll examine them today for our study. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. 
And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all of the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it sat upon each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and began to speak with other tongues, as the Spirit gave them utterance. What we have here is God's fulfilling His promise. The scriptures are abundant with God giving promise of a time when he would send forth his Holy Spirit, that he would pour him out upon his people, that they might be changed, that they might be empowered, that they might be renewed and invigorated by the very power and presence of God himself. And the scriptures are abundant in their prediction and prophecy of this time. I will just call your attention to just a few of them. For example, we read in Joel chapter 2, where the Lord spoke through the prophet Joel, and he said, There will come a day in the last days, he said, I will pour out my Spirit upon all flesh, upon all kinds of people, men and women, old men, young men, children. I will pour out my Spirit upon them. We find as we read further on in Acts chapter 2 that that is the very reference to which Peter referred when he was describing and explaining to the crowd that gathered what had happened. He made reference back to Joel chapter 2 and he said, I want to remind you of what was prophesied. This is what was prophesied. It has happened. It has come. We find as we read also another popular reference in the book of Isaiah, chapter 44, gives us very clear reference to this outpouring of the Spirit of God and is described in this fashion. It says, I will pour water upon him who is thirsty. I will pour floods upon the dry ground. And throughout Scripture, one of the pictures of the Holy Spirit is water and is given to us here in picture form of this time when God would pour out upon his people his Holy Spirit. And he said, I'll tell you what it will be like. It will be like pouring water upon someone who is thirsty. It will be like pouring floods upon dry ground. A prophecy and a prediction of the time that would come when he would shed forth his Spirit upon all kinds of people. We find as we come to the New Testament that John the Baptist also prophesied and predicted that this day would come. When he first identified the Lord Jesus and pointed him out, we read in Matthew chapter 3, verse 11, he pointed out the Lord Jesus and he said, there's the Lamb of God. He is the one who will pour out the Spirit of God upon you. And we find as we look through Scripture that there's just abundant evidence that predicted the time when God would pour out His Spirit upon all flesh. And we find that the Lord Jesus Himself even discussed this very important issue. And we find it recorded in Acts chapter 1 as one place where He talked about it. We find in Luke chapter 24 was another place where He talked about it. Prior to His ascension up into heaven, he took his disciples aside and he talked to them about this very day, about this very time. We read that because it says in, in Acts chapter 1, verse number 4, it says, And being assembled together with them, he commanded them not to depart Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father. Now, that's the same phrase that is referred to in Luke 24 when he says, Don't depart until you be clothed with power. Wait for it. I will send it. And that is the latter part of the verse. He says, which you have heard of me. So the Lord Jesus took aside his disciples and his followers and he told them there's coming a day when I will ask the Father to send to you the Holy Spirit that God would pour out upon you his presence by his Spirit. It's coming. It will happen. And we find, as we read in Acts chapter 2, the provision of the promise. 
the pouring out of the Spirit of God upon all kinds of people. All kinds of nationalities, young people, old people, women, men, young people. God fulfilled his promise. He sent his Spirit. And we find as we read through the book of Acts that this just wasn't a one-time occurrence. There are many people today who, well-intentioned, feel that that is the only time when God poured out his Spirit. And yet, as we read through the book of Acts and we read through the New Testament, we find that there are many occasions when God performed a similar occasion when he poured out his Spirit upon people, some of them several times. And we find them recorded in the book of Acts the numerous times when God poured out his Spirit upon his people. So it wasn't just a one-time event, but it is one that we can experience frequently. One which God himself in his sovereign will gives to us as his children. And as we look down through church history, we find that there were frequent occasions again when God poured out his spirit upon people. God revealing himself in a fresh and powerful way. Just like he said, it would be like rivers of water. It would be like floods upon the dry ground. And we can look back in history and we can see times when God has done that. And even in our present day, we can look around the world and at individuals and we can see when God has done that again. When he has poured out his spirit upon people. It is a promise of the Father, the scriptures call it when he would pour out his spirit upon people, that we might be clothed with power, it says, that we might have a new heart within us, not a heart of stone, but a heart of flesh that would enable us to walk in obedience to God's word, that we might find a fresh power from God himself who enables us to walk in obedience and faith. He said, I will pour out my spirit upon you and you shall be changed. It's available. It's happened. It's available even today for you to experience, for me to enjoy. God providing yet again in agreement with his promise. This was the time when he gave it in the first instance. He fulfilled his promise and it is available. It is our privilege to enjoy it even today. Now as we look at this fulfillment, we find that immediately there were some obstacles that arose. There were some difficulties and hindrances thrown in the pathway. And we find as we read through chapter 2, we find that as... This occurrence was noised abroad in the city of Jerusalem that there were many people who came to see what was happening. And by the way, I just put in parentheses here. This is far better than any advertising campaign you will ever purchase. It is far better than any test desktop publishing program you could ever design. When God himself pours out his spirit upon his people... Others come. They say, what's going on? Something's happening over there at that church. What is it? Well, the crowds came. Thousands of them came to see what was happening. And as they came, we see that there were some obstacles thrown up. We find in verse number 12, for example, it says, and they were all amazed and were in Doubt, saying one to another, what meaneth this? Others mocked and said, they're just drunk. They're full of new wine. Notice, if you will, these are very common obstacles today to people experiencing and enjoying the outpouring of the Holy Spirit upon us as believers. There are people who doubt. They question it. They are amazed. They wonder at it all and say, I don't think that can happen. 
I don't think that can happen to me. I don't think God intends that to happen. And there's all kinds of questions and doubts that arise in our minds as we begin to examine this experience in the Spirit of God when the Father pours out His Spirit upon us. Doubt. Just like those people in the crowds who came, they doubted it all. And then notice a, there's another thing here. They, it says they were amazed. What meaneth this? In some instances, there's legitimate ignorance. There are many people who are not aware of the fact that the Scriptures teach that this is an experience for them to enjoy even today. They've never been taught. And we find in the New Testament, there were, in, in the book of Acts specifically, there were some instances of that. Apollos was one, for example. The church at Ephesus was another one. They were not aware of the fact that God had poured out His Spirit upon people and that it was something they could enjoy. So in some instances, there is legitimate ignorance, just plain lack of knowledge. Not aware of the fact that God had given birth to his promise and had sent his spirit in great abundance upon his people to enjoy and to experience. And yet there are other kinds of obstacles here as well thrown up by the mockery. Making fun of those who have experienced a vital new aliveness from God by the Holy Spirit. And they mock it and they make fun of it. Just like these people did it, ah, they're just a bunch of drunks. They're just a bunch of an emotional fanatics. Don't pay any attention to them. Isn't it sad that the one thing that God sent for us for our enjoyment, for our empowerment, for our ability to understand and grasp the glory and wonder of the Lord Jesus is the very person that we reject? And that's the Holy Spirit of God. That's the one person whom God has sent with a specific function in mind. That is to open our minds and our hearts to understand and to grant to us power to live and walk in newness of life. And by rejecting it through doubt or by ignorance or in mockery, we reject the very one whom God has sent to us for our good. So we find some of the obstacles that came up back then are even prevalent today. But that does not in any way, my friend, negate the fact that it's available. It still doesn't rule out the fact that God can still perform as He did back then and pour out His Spirit upon you and upon your family and upon your church. It is still available it is something that you can enjoy and experience today. And the scriptures give to us very clear explanation as how that can become part of our experience. For the Lord Jesus himself taught and explained how it works, if you will, how it functions, how it comes into being, if you will. I made reference earlier in the broadcast to Acts chapter 1 where the Lord Jesus talked about the discussion he had with his disciples and he, he told them, wait, because I'm going to send forth the Spirit upon you and I've told you about it. Well, where did the Lord Jesus talk about it? Well, we don't have a lot of recorded instances when the Lord did talk about it, but one of the more clear instances where he did, we find in the Gospel of John, chapter 7, where the Lord Jesus made very clear reference to this very experience. And he did it in this fashion. He was at one of the feast days, one of the holidays for the Jewish people. And it says on the last day of the feast, this is John 7, verse number 37, it says on the last day of the feast, Jesus stood up and he said, if any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. For he that believeth on me out of his innermost being, or the literal translation, out of his belly, 
will flow rivers of living water. And he spoke those words with specific reference to what happened on the day of Pentecost. So what is it that the Lord Jesus would have us understand how you and how they came to experience the Spirit of God poured out upon them? You come to the living water Himself, the Lord Jesus. He said, if you are thirsty, remember the reference from Isaiah? Those who are thirsty, He will provide water. If you are thirsty, come to Me. Believe on me, trust me, for he that believeth on me, out of him shall flow these rivers of living water, floods upon the dry ground. That believing in the Lord Jesus is twofold, my friend. First of all, there is that initial belief of saving faith in the Lord Jesus. There is that time when you come and understand your sinfulness before God and your inability to ever respond to God in your own strength and your own abilities. To ever satisfy a holy God by your own works. And you recognize that the Lord Jesus paid the penalty of sin for sinners like you. And you trust Him for yourself. That initial time of faith when you trust the Lord Jesus as your own living Savior. That's the first evidence of faith. That's the first kind of faith that you cast upon the Lord Jesus. Then there's a second kind of faith, or the second time of faith, when you also trust the Lord Jesus that He will provide for you what He promised He would provide. Rivers of living water. For you see, my friend, if you are like the crowd in Acts chapter 2 that you doubt it and you make fun of it and you mock it, then, my friend, you will never experience it. You will never enjoy it because it comes through faith. The Lord Jesus said, Those who believe, out of them shall flow rivers of living water. So we come to the Lord Jesus and we ask of Him, that He would provide for us what He promised, rivers of living water. And the Lord Jesus is faithful to His promise and to His Word. He will pour out upon you His Holy Spirit as He did to them and as He has through countless thousands throughout church history that you might experience the living reality and freshness of the living water poured out upon you. Floods, as the Word promised. Rivers, as the Lord promised, upon the dry ground. For Joel himself prophesied, under the power of God, God promised He would pour out His Spirit upon all kinds of people. That can include you today, my friend. You can experience that for yourself. You can experience that freshness and the outpouring of the Spirit of God upon you today. Come to Jesus in faith. First of all, as Savior. If you have not trusted Him, I challenge you today and urge you and call upon you to place your trust in the Lord Jesus as your living Savior. And then if you are a believer in Christ, then you have the right and privilege to experience the rivers of living water that He promised. I pray that the Spirit of God has opened your eyes today to see and understand the truth of His Word. That you would see that there is this joyous experience that you can know today. And that you, by the power of the Spirit of God, would come to Christ in faith. Trusting Him, beseeching Him for those rivers of living water that He promised. That you might experience the outpouring of the Spirit of God upon you in your life today.